Hello everyone, welcome back to Technology Moments and to this new video dedicated to the OMATA Unified Network Environment and particularly this time we are configuring the ER605 Gigabit VPN router uh, but we're gonna do so in a standalone way this means that you do not need anything besides the router you do not need the OMATA network controller you just need the router and the computer so you can get it ready for your network in no time this is a router that provides you in a standalone way with a whole bunch of advanced features, a lot of security, and we're gonna be also testing how reliable this router is. We'll see how fast its graphic user's interface is, and overall, we're gonna have a very high standard to compare it with. On one hand, the Unified Dream Machine Pro, and on the other hand, the Unified Dream Machine, which is the one this router is gonna replace for a few months, and our tests are done in a real-life environment of moderate to high traffic. Let's keep in mind, however, that the Unified Dream Machine features a fantastic Wave 2 AC access point. Unboxing this router doesn't have much to show, and the only important thing to notice is that it is very well made out of sturdy materials that may also help with heat dissipation, as it has a metal body. There are basically two ways you can configure this router. One, with the OMATA controller, and in this particular video we are centering our attention in how to set up this router as a standalone gateway to your network. This means that basically you're gonna connect directly to your router and use a web graphical user interface to set up whatever parameters you have already configured in your network. So we are basically migrating from one to another gateway. We're also gonna be giving you some tips about how to set up your router so you can replace it in a matter of minutes. This to make it as close as possible to a real life environment, replacing this unified dream machine from Ubiquity with the ER605 VPN router. Basically, the main differences between the models of TP-Link vary in terms of performance and number of devices they'll be able to handle. In future videos, we're going to be showing you how to configure this from the unified network environment, which is going to be much easier. So hands on our workshop, we're going to connect our router to our existing network as if the WAN port in our router we're gonna connect directly to our ISP's devices. This makes it much simpler to configure and much less internet downtime for your network, in case you need such an approach. We can notice that as soon as we connect the router to our computer and at the same time the router to our network, we already have internet access. It is doing basically a two-step address translation. This also means that if my ISP were to give me a dynamic IP address as most ISPs do, I would already be able to connect to my modem or to my optic terminal and have internet access right away. But not so fast. Let's continue and let me show you as our in our case, we have a fixed IP address to configure. We then have to check with one of the IP addresses the router has assigned us. In this case, it was the .0.165. And also the networking properties tab is telling us that the router, of course, is the .0.1 IP in our network. That means we're going to be opening our web browser and access the user interface of our router. The device then answers and tells us that we need to set up our new administrator password. We do so by being very careful that we don't forget it, otherwise we would need to reset it to defaults again. We're gonna be talking about all the services that this router has to offer and all its functionality in several videos in the future. You can be sure that it has more than you can think of, even in a standalone way as we're doing today. We noticed that we could also see quite similar level of personalization even in consumer products from TP-Link. We then check our WAN address, which in this case is not really internet, but also is a private network. And the first thing we might need to do is set up the type of connection that you're gonna be using to connect to your ISP. Some ISPs assign IP addresses by VLANs, some others by point-to-point -point protocol over ethernet, and some will just give you the IP address and the network mask, so you must manually set it up in your router. It depends, of course, on the ISP. We can also check right here if we're gonna have a dual internet access for your network. That is a pretty interesting topic that we're gonna be studying in future videos. Uh, this means dual WAN or even more ISPs in case that you have critical services running or downtime is not an option. I recommend you do a simple setup with a single ISP and then add an internet provider to your router. Before we continue with a public IP setup, we take note of port redirection, specific configuration of our previous router, as after we execute the following steps, we're gonna lose connectivity with our main router. 
In our case, we'll configure the public IP address and WAN connection as per instructions of our ISP by creating a tunnel, which information is provided also by them. They already have configured such connection to be assigned a fixed public IP. We set up our point-to-point -point protocol over Ethernet with its correspondent username and password. In our previous gateway, we needed to set this value manually, but we're going to leave it like that. We're going to leave it as it is. Save the configuration and wait until the router reboots, which only takes a couple of minutes. You can leave this link on or you might choose to disconnect it. It will not affect the rest of this exercise. As for your LAN, configure the DHCP server so it matches the network you are already running. Leave the lease time short if you rotate your clients a lot or extend such lease time if you don't. You're not gonna have internet access yet. What you're gonna do is you're going to set up or configure the port forwarding or redirection active in your network, something that TP-Link calls virtual servers. Select the name, the ports, the destination IP inside your network, type of port, and don't forget to have enabled check. This, firewall exceptions and VPN servers are very simple to use, but may be time consuming tasks, which we're gonna see in another video. Once you set the most important up, you're ready to replace your old router with the new one. Having done all this, and of course, having checked connections, power cords, and having identified which cables are connected to what, as you can see right here, switching from one to another router only took about three minutes, as we can see right here in this pink plotter graph. And what's very interesting is that our port for running is already active and working. It's a good practice, of course, to check if your redirection is working properly. This location where we have installed this router is critical in terms of availability. So it is important for us that our gateways are always active and we can rely on them. We've heard great comments about this router. We'll see if everything turns out to be true. You might want to check the links related to videos at the end of this one. Of course, we're going to be elaborating on that for quite some time. There are tons of cool features available for this router, as you can see right here in the web interface. Also, another cool feature that a lot of our followers have been asking from Unify and that is available on this router is that different than what Unify has to offer in the Unify Dream Machine Pro, this one has dual internet access, but not just with failover capabilities. This router can handle load balancing and fail safe, which is something we had only seen in the Ubiquiti Edge Router 10. Also, the advantage of including more WAN ports. Ok guys, I hope this video gave you a successful short introduction to how you can make a very quick standalone setup of these great routers. We're gonna be studying many more features from this router and in a standalone manner, as well as part of the network controller from Omata in our next videos to show you how exactly the same thing we did here can be done from the network controller. Thank you very much for watching. Remember that you support us by subscribing to our channel and liking this video. See you next time.